Greetings! In today's video, I want to take a look at paints that are black through mixing a bunch of pigments together and not using any black pigment in the mix. I have four of these colors here, three from Daniel Smith and one from M. Graham. The colors I have are McCracken Black from Daniel Smith. I have Black Blue Orange, Black Red Green and Neutral Tin from M. Graham. Let's take a look at swatches of these and also I took the time to look through my dot cards and swatched all the paints that are part of the mix for each color. The first color I swatched is the one made from the most colors mixed in. It's McCracken Black by Daniel Smith. So it's a signature series color based on the work of Mr. Lauren McCracken. What's special about this one is that it is a mix of seven pigments. That's a lot of pigments. At this point, you really need it pre-mixed because I don't see how you can consistently mix all of these the same way every single time. So the colors in this mix, we have Prussian Blue PB27, Transparent Brown Oxide PR101, Carbazole Violet PV23 Red Shade, Quinacridone Violet PV19, Anthraquinoid Red PR177, Nickel Azo Yellow PY150, and Perlene Scarlet PR149. That's a lot of colors, really. The second black with the most pigments in the mix is this black blue orange. Now, when I looked at this color on Daniel Smith website, I saw that it's now named Jane's Black and it's part of Jane Blundell's signature series. When I bought it, it was just black, blue, orange. So I don't know what happened there, but that's the same color technically. This one has phthalocyanine blue red shade PB15 column 6 in it. Naftal Red PR188. This one took me a, a bit of a while to figure out, but it's actually Daniel Smith's Organic Vermilion. And we also have Pyrrol Orange P071, which actually is the transparent Pyrrol Orange. With just three colors in the mix, this one is already much easier to mix on your own than the first one. Still, it's a bit of a trick to probably get the ratio right, so again, can be really handy to have it pre-mixed in the tube. The third and last color from Daniel Smith is black, red, green. Same story as the one before. When I looked on their website, it's now named Jane's Black Red Green. So I guess something changed there, but it's supposed to be the same color again. So this one is only two pigments. We have Thalocyanine Green Blue Shade, so PG7, and Pyrrol Crimson PR264. So this two colors, that's manageable. That's something you can mix on your own on your palette. If you use it a lot, then it's convenient to buy it pre-mixed in a tube, but otherwise you can mix it yourself. The last color I swatched was M. Graham's Neutral Tint. It's made of two pigments, so we have Quinacridone Violet PV19 and Chlorinated Copper Phthalocyanine PG7, which is basically phthalo green blue shade. Again, as this one is only two colors, you can probably mix it yourself if you need it, but it's always good to have a pre-mixed tube if you use it a lot. This is the four blacks on their own. Seen like this, we can see a bit of a difference between each of them. For example, the M. Graham one seems to lean towards the violet in the mix, just a bit. The red-green feels a bit greener than, say, the blue-orange, which feels a bit orange when you compare the two. The McCracken black seems to be quite neutral. Overall, they all could be used as black in any painting. Like I said, of course we can mix blacks ourselves, but Having it premixed is always more practical. Now, what can be impractical is the price point. The McCracken Black is a Series 2. The Blue Orange is also a Series 2. The Red Green is a Series 2 as well. And finally, the M. Graham color is a Series 1. So the least expensive one here is the M. Graham paint. In general, M. Graham is more affordable than Daniel Smith, and this being a series one puts it at the lower price bracket, while these are series two, so they're the second lowest price bracket. Personally, I really like mixed blacks that don't include any black pigment. I usually find them less flat, and they have a bit more depth and a bit more life than a black pigment. Do you need any of these? Not really. Whatever you like to use is always the best option, but I thought it would be interesting to take a look at these and just compare how they look between each other. So what do you guys think? Do you have a favorite in those four? Do you use black in your painting a lot or not a lot? <laughs> 
please let me know in the comments below and thank you very much for watching. Take care, bye bye.